Hey everybody, what's up? This video is brought to you by Linode. If you guys are looking for web hosting, I've been using them for over eight years now. They actually are the web host that I use for CodeHawk and a bunch of other websites that I've owned in the past. I recommend you check them out because they're going to save you a ton of money over Azure or AWS. They're one of the largest independently owned cloud hosting providers out there. They've been around since 2003. They also have great support when you need it. Hey everybody, what's up? All right, so in this video, what I want to talk about is whether or not in 2020, late 2020 at this point, um, do we need CSS libraries anymore? And um, for the longest time, I've been a bootstrap person. I remember when I first got into web development, CSS media queries were like a big thing and people were talking about responsive web design. So um, we were like one of my first projects was actually building a responsive website using media queries before really anybody was using it on any mainstream level. But then like right about the time that the project got completed, Bootstrap came out. And I remember seeing Bootstrap and I'm like, oh, you know, it looked really good. It looked really smooth. And it was responsive as hell too. It definitely, it was much better than the code that I wrote myself. Um, but I, I was like critical of it because I was like, oh, you know, all the websites that use Bootstrap, they look the same. But then I realized it was really just about the fact that people were using the same templates over and over again. And once you understood how to use bootstrap classes to your advantage, really the, the rows, columns, um, and that's really all it was to it, uh, containers and such. And once you had that down, like you could actually lay your, your UI out like any way you wanted. So you could differentiate with bootstrap. So it seems like Bootstrap is still the most popular CSS library. It still brings a lot um, to the table, but it brings a lot of bloat, which is the downside, I think, to using it. Another thing, too, is like it seems like, again, everybody's using the same template layouts. They use like the alternating 100% um, like mobile full width you know, versus like container width that's centered in the middle. So really, you have to question, though, what is the point of using something like this? It, it's to save you a bunch of time to do layouts like what is being shown in this example. And that used to really save you a lot of time. And it seems like now a lot of people are trying to move to new libraries to try to you know come up with something else. So now we're seeing materialize and the components look a little bit different, but it's based on like Google Polymer. So it's very like paper design. Uh, it goes back to like, I would say like old school square kind of lo look and feel. And then we also have like new flavor of the week stuff like Tailwind CSS. And although Tailwind CSS is not a like CSS library like Bootstrap, um, it is like basically another thing where it's like, do we really need it? And um, I think my answer to that is that we don't. Like we end up using these libraries like Materialize and then like we're like, shit, you know, because I'm using React, I got to use Materialize UI, which is like, it, like an, it, it's some project that basically wraps it with a bunch of React components instead of just using the library uh, as a simple CSS file or something like that. Um, it just seems like we add all this complication to our build process or it's like, hey, instead of me just writing a few, you know, classes that I might need, Okay, I'm going to use Tailwind CSS that essentially uh, rewrote the CSS language with a bunch of HTML classes. So basically, when I was looking at what is the best CSS library in 2020, my conclusion is basically fuck all of it and not go with any of them. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. And you know what? I'm not a UI designer, but you could give me any image of any website in the world uh, or any functionality that it does and I can literally replicate it. So in my opinion, I don't need these libraries because they add way too much bloat. And the bloat I'm talking about is the fact that you're not gonna use like 75% of all the classes and uh, components and such that are inside of these libraries. And I suppose you could say, okay, well, if you're using SAS or something like that, that you could uh, just bring in portions of Bootstrap that you need. But again, like you don't really need any of it. And the reason why I think we don't need any of it is because we don't need to worry about the licenses. We don't have to worry about bugs. We don't have to worry about what is cool. We could worry about what we need and focus on only what we need as like businesses, as individuals, whatever it is that we're creating. Flexbox is the bee's knees, dude. Like seriously, if you get Flexbox down, there's no more, like you don't really need Tailwind or any of this other stuff. It's ridiculous. You're writing basic CSS. And the layouts, which used to be very, very buggy and very, very difficult to deal with, uh, with like floats and clears and all that, like Flexbox does away with all that.
So basically, I might change my mind at some point and like uh, go with one of those other libraries. But for right now, like I'm looking at like different templates and everything, and I'm seeing so much bloat inside templates. And that's another thing too. Like if you go to Template uh, Theme Monster, and they've actually sponsored my channel in the past. But and I don't mean to like call them out, but like I've actually tried to use them. And then you know just recently, and like they're, I'm downloading Gulp files and like Bower and all this stuff. And uh, I mean just some really dated old like workflow. So I think the point is, is like come up with your, your own workflow. And, and for this new project that I'm doing, that's exactly what I did. I created my own um, template engine that basically uh, wraps the handlebars template engine and it's written in TypeScript. So uh, it's all using Node. And as far as my CSS is concerned, I'm going with straight SAS, man. Like SAS, that's all I need. Uh, I can change any of this stuff. I can pile it out into my distribution CSS and I get my uh, min, whatever it is I'm working on here, this is my main min right here. So I'm getting it minified. And this other stuff is uh, is legacy here for the old website. So what am I doing here? Basically what I'm thinking is like, I don't need any of these CSS libraries because for the most part, my CSS is like literally some of these things. So I'll build these little helper classes where I use and I commonly need these things. Like I don't need padding on the bottom. I get it, dude, Tailwind does the same shit, but you know what? Like. I don't need all the libraries that it comes with or all the classes um, you know, that I may or may not need or whatever. I'm only adding what I need as I need it. And basically what I'm doing is I'm building this page out right here. Now, again, the UI, the theme, the colors, all that, like you can criticize it, whatever. That's not the point of this. The point is that like what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to figure out with just simple media queries and some basic classes, how do I use Flexbox to my advantage without having to download a bunch of libraries, make things as quick as possible, one tiny CSS file, and just a couple, really, the, the entire website um, is, uh, is being rewritten, but um, all that Flexbox crap is essentially inside of, literally, I just wrapped these containers, and I use these, um, these uh, names, these class names that I came up with myself, which obviously just extend Flexbox functionality, which is the same exa exact thing that Tailwind is doing, but I don't need Tailwind to do it for me. Like SAS does this, Webpack easily compiles it. Um, this is where it's like loading my SAS stuff. So all this stuff is there. Honestly, like I have courses that also teach all this crap. We simply don't need half of these flavor of the week libraries that are adding tools and complexities to our builds, adding who knows what for dependencies on top of dependencies. And it's just not worth it. I think that these days with Flexbox, CSS Grid, you can lay things out any way you want with CSS. It pretty much works across the board for most mobile devices and browsers. So my opinion is that companies should be building their own library and only use what they need. If they need to replicate the look and feel of something, go ahead and do that. But we should be using component-based architecture anyway. Uh, we should be using the BIM model of um, block element modifier model of CSS, in my opinion. I use that with SAS, and I'm just going to continue to stick with it.